So delighted now to be joined by former Galway senior footballer uh, Sean Denver and hopefully in a few moments as well we'll have uh, GMIT uh, signature manager Tom Hughes uh, coming on the line as well. Galway obviously just coming up short last night against uh, Mayo in the FPD League semi-final which now means that's their FPD League campaign finished and they'll now uh, face Mayo again on the 28th of January in the opening round of the National League. Uh, Sean, we were just saying off air there, um, FBD now like playing it in the dome and everything, it's, I suppose it's a fair change to when I suppose you were slogging in the gutter uh, in January. Yeah, yeah, we were just talking about it there, um, you know, back, back in my day, a, few, a good few years ago when you didn't have the dome, you'd be either in Tume or you could be anywhere in, in Connacht in, in the muck and the rain and the wind, even looking at the weather last night, I was looking at it, it was thunder here and um, so they're they're quite lucky now to have it in the dome, and even for the management, really, it's it's more. So when lads are getting a chance, probably when lads used to get chances in the FBD, you know, it doesn't really equate to the old the summer football and the hard ground. And you know, when you're trying to kind of show what you're about, and um, especially in the FBD, you, you know, you're trying to show that you have that bit of X factor, or what can you offer um, for the panel. Um, which was harder always to do, um, you know, in the in the bad weather. So, you know, it's great to see. Um, I, I was even actually just looking there. Um, so 5.26 was scored from play and only four frees. So out of the 5.30, uh, it was only four frees. Like, so that, that tells its own story. Now, at the same time, you know, that doesn't really, um, that's that wouldn't happen in championship football. You know, it, it, it would be a bit tighter, but it definitely does, uh, help the spectacle and uh, especially some lads that are trying to put you know lay down a marker you've seen Tom O'Connor coming on scoring 2-2 two, two. Um, you can make more of an impact come on as a sub also um, in, when there's a good ground and no wind rather than uh, coming on for the last 10 minutes in, in a in dirty muck and wind howling around the place so um, Galway I think be very happy um, with the way they finished um, I think both sets of management between Mayo and Galway would be happy where they're at. Um, Mayo probably needs to, to lay down a marker. Um, you know, we've seen Galway win the last two FBD uh, finals. Um, you could see that even when Port Joyce first came in, he wanted to get silverware. He wants to get a kind of winning mentality. Um, and probably the priorities have shifted a small bit now, um, looking further down the line, trying to get... Um, a few more players that maybe impact uh, in, on the championship um, and you could I think they'd be happy of course he wouldn't be happy the first half being 10 points down but he'd be happy with the second half and um, the way he brought lads in you know Ethan Comer come in Tom O'Connor uh, gave them a bit more bite and attack and oh, we could have stole it if Nathan Granger um, got that goal at the end um, but in, in my experience too I think you know Park could be happy that he'd actually have um, an extra weekend of working on either a tough training session because what sometimes you have, you know, if they had, if they were in the FBD final next weekend, you know, you're almost losing out in two sessions that you could be working, um, getting that ex extra bit of fitness in your legs before the National League because when the National League comes, you don't really have time to be working on fitness and strength because, you know, it's game, you know, every two weeks and you're, you're basically recovering for the first week and then you're kind of focusing on the next week uh, in terms of your um, second league game or third league game so I think he'd be happy that he you know he might get the extra weekend you know you have, you have the lads from my column coming back now and um, between colleges I'd say it's, I'd say it's a bit of a nightmare for inter-county managers to be honest this time of year between all the different commitments um, mm -hmm. you know you can see how the O'Burn Cup has been affected um, with you know teams pulling out and um, again it'll be interesting what future holds with these competitions with the shortened uh, calendar for the GA Intercounty C. Yeah, it's a fair point you touch on there with the uh, pre-season competitions. Obviously, Percy Loud during the week uh, didn't fulfil the fixture. I didn't think it was Carroll conceded against Leash. Now, awfully, I pulled out of their semi-final. So that's just meant for a long for it, um, Loud final now at the O'Byrne Cup. But... <laughs> Is like from your own days of playing, like would you see would you see much value with the FBD or like because if you're, ultimately you're not playing this, like teams are obviously just going to go away anyways and play challenge matches. Um, there is because you know it is about development. You know, 
I can't say that I would have had, you know, the, the career with Galway I had um, over the over the six year period if I could I started off with FBD. You know, my first FBD campaign um, was under Al Mulholland's first year. Um, and I actually, I didn't make the championship panel for that or the league panel, but then I got another run the year after in the FBD and, you know, I performed to a higher level. I knew the things I had to work on and then I managed to make the, the league and championship panel. So it is kind of a development and a stepping stone. Um, it does give lads chances because the pressure on inter-county managers, um, you, you know, when you come to the league, unless that you have a lot of coin in the bank, um, it's hard to be kind of trying out lads and seeing, you know, what can you work on in the summer because with Division, especially the way it is now with Division 1, Division 2, if you go down to Division 3, you could be looking at the Talton Cup. So the league is getting even more important for a lot of teams. Um, so, uh, probably, you know, if you look at teams or uh, competitions like the FBD, the O'Burn Cup, it is probably the only chance that you'll get to see um, a lot of these young players coming through and while challenge games are great, I've seen them before, you know, you might play um, a total different team in the second half. Uh, you might play three halves of 20 minutes. Um, it doesn't have the same bite to it. You do work on things, but, you know, an FBD is a game. You're putting on the Galway jersey, you're playing an inter-county team, and there's a cup at the end of it. So it has that bit of bite to it. So, you know, I was um, I was always thankful for that a competition like the FBD was there. I just think they'll have to rethink maybe the calendar and how they can fit it in. Yeah, especially with Sigerson at the same time, um, you know my personal view. It's a pity that they're playing Sigerson games at this time of year when you know it, I played Sigerson for Manuth. Um, we got to the the Sigerson final actually. We got bet by DCU, and um, but that definitely helped my development. Also, I remember um, it's one of the reasons I got called into the Galway panel for the FBD was because I was playing um, in the Sigerson um, and John Dibley at the time. Um, I know that he, you know, he was in regular touch with Animal Holland about players and development. Um, so, you know, it's a pity that you know I was just looking at the weather yesterday, and um, it's a pity that you know they don't have better weather, you know, drier ball, and uh, better time of year. But again, the way it is now with the split season, it's very hard to fit everything in. Um, but again, the split season is only there for the last um, year or two, so I'm sure they'll be fine tuning it um, over the next few years. John Dibley, there you mentioned him with Manute, uh, obviously doing a lot of the coaching now for this Goa team. From your own experience, obviously it's uh, a couple of years ago now, but like, what was he like to work under for you? Uh, he was great now, you know, I, I'd be very thankful to John. Um, he's definitely one of the reasons why I um, I got the chance to, to, to play for Galway. Um, you know, he, he kind of believed in my, it was actually the first time I remember um, when I started off, you know, we had trials games and I was always a forward um, for my club, you know, either playing full forward line, half forward line. And we, in the first, I think it was September, October, our first league game was against DCU. And all of a sudden I was put back corner back and I didn't know what was going on or, but, you know, John Dibley tells you to go somewhere or to play somewhere, that's what you do. And probably my biggest mistake was I actually played quite well corner back. I didn't really defend much all I... I, I just remember I was Martin actually David Kelly from uh, Sligo, uh, which is not ideal too when you're looking at the nippiest corner forward at the time. So, um, but so I knew that I wasn't going to be able to man mark him too well. So what could I do is just basically attack as much as I can. And I actually played quite well. Uh, so I was stuck in the backs for the rest of the year, and he put me wing back, and it's actually there where I kind of start playing my best football. Um, and then I was playing wing back for for Galway. Um, in the FBD so I'm even thankful for that little change he must have seen something um, that other maybe coaches didn't see before you know when I was playing Galway underage or for the club I always played in the forwards so John Dibley must have seen something different um, you know he does that have, have that kind of uh, mind for football um, and then in terms of training you know he's a great trainer also one of the things he was very good um, in terms of you know being a Sigerson manager he was great at getting a team together um, there was a serious bond in our Manute team. Uh, we wouldn't have been favourites whatsoever. You know, we probably wouldn't even be expected to go to go further than the quarter final or even even so. So to get to the final, one of the reasons was that there was a really close knit group brought us all together. And you know, he made you, he made you feel that you could beat anyone on any day. And you know that that's what John would all be about. Would he be a very hands on coach? 
yeah, yeah. All he, like he'd be taking the trainings. Um, and I, I remember one of the, so usually uh, we've done a week's training, you know, when we're doing study week, uh, probably the week, it's like two weeks before championship starts for Sigerson, we do a full week training and, you know, he'd be very hands-on early morning sessions. He was very good at communicating two things you have to work work on, uh, th- th- you know, things he expects from you. Um, and, you know, he, he, not that he... Not that he was kind of ruling with an iron fist, but at the same time, you wouldn't get on the wrong side of him. And um, he expected um, a performance. He expected you to go to training, not even performing games, but also performing training. And, uh, you know, in terms of coaching, he, he, he definitely honed in on the basics like blocking and um, blocking, tackling um, and all those. And, you know, we were a very hard team to play against then because of the, uh, the values that he installed in the team. Just there as well, uh, before we do get into kind of, uh, I suppose, looking at the Goy Mayo game, you talk about like being a new player and everything surrounding the FBD. What's that kind of experience like when you come in and I suppose there's experienced players there in the Goy team and you come in and you're trying to, I suppose, earn your craft and I suppose make an impression straight away? Yeah, um, probably the first time I actually was probably... Uh, so in the summer when uh, Thomas of Florida was the first time I kind of ca- got called in for training. So uh, what happens often, you know, come championship time, um, you know, they want to be playing 15 on 15A versus B games. But sometimes if there's a few injuries, they might call in someone that's p- performing well in club games. So I remember Thomas of Florida called me in um, and, you know, that, that was the first time that I was actually in on a Galway um, uh, training session and kind of A versus B game, and you're seeing the likes. Of Park Joyce was still playing at the time, and I was there. And you know, I remember sitting next to him in the dressing room, and you know, this is the lad I was looking at winning All Ireland when I was only, you know, um, a ten year old or a nine year old. So you know, these are the kind of the heroes you almost looked at. The same thing then, you know, the likes of Michael Meehan and Gary Slice. You know, these lads that you're looking at for years playing at a high level for Galway, uh, the Galway football team, and now you're talking out with them. So. Um, again, but you have to realise you're ju- you're just he's a player and you're a player and that you have to do you know focus on yourself and try to perform. You can't be just kind of looking at all these players and without thinking about yourself. Um, so um, coming into the FBD, it probably makes it a bit easier then in the FBD because there's a lot of new lads coming through. Um, and you're not you're not the only one. Um, you know trying to, to to perform and you know show what they're they're about. Um, so. Uh, again, you know, it's thoroughly enjoyable and, you know, experience that I'll, that I'll never forget. And there you're touching on, I suppose, with being a new player and everything. But I suppose it's it's a very different situation now, I suppose, for some of these players coming in. Like, I suppose it's safe to say when you were coming in, like, Galway football probably wasn't on as much of a rise as it is now. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're probably at the, the the confidence wasn't great at the time, and you know you could probably look at that in two ways. You know, for me because it was like that, maybe you could see that you had a chance to kind of cho- show something different that they haven't been seeing. Um, it's probably you know after having maybe a poor, um, it's the summer that I wasn't involved. Adam Holland's first summer, I think. So they they lost to Antrim, if I remember correctly, in the championship. Mm-hmm. Um, which yeah, you know they had a great. I think they had a great performance against Last Common in the first game, and then when they lost to Antrim, you know there was a lot of questions, and it's probably when there's a loss like that, you know they're looking for new, uh, fresh blood and some some players to add something different. So you can look at it as an opportunity, but then on the other side of things, you're going into maybe a team that you that isn't performing, um, at the highest of levels uh, that it probably should have been. And if you're going into a team like that, maybe the confidence isn't as high. You know, one of the things you could even see yesterday, you know, team, you know, with players, um, you know, playing, they're playing with that bit of swagger, you know, that bit of confidence. And it's easier to come into a team probably with confidence. Um, and, you know, you, you could definitely notice that in some of the play yesterday. You know, as I said, you know, when you're looking at the amount of scores from play and um, especially one of the, the, the goal that uh, Tomo got, and Johnny Heaney kicking it in, Comer catching it, and it was two kick passes and it was in the net. I'd say, you know, that's the kind of play that they're going to look to bring in more. I think they got a, a good foundation last year um, in terms of their defensive structure. Uh, they must have sat down, you know, you can see maybe Keen O'Neill and imprint on that. Um, and, 
but now they're going to have to bring bring it to develop it to another level and um the players that come in they're coming into a team full of confidence so uh, definitely you know you can it can work both ways um you know it probably gave me the chance because they're looking at new fresh blood but at the same time um you know it, it is probably better to come into a team that is uh, in full flow and you know looking very confident we should be able to hear Tom now, um, <coughs> I expect. Um, but yeah, Tom, just touching there uh, between Sigerson now and FPD, like there's there's a lot of debate, I suppose, you're with the GMIT Sigerson team this year, but there's a lot of debate around the calendar about, I suppose, pre-seasons and these colleges' competitions being played at the same time of year. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hot in the press, all right, in fairness, but like it is, it is. It's tough. It's t- it's probably tough on the players more than anyone. Like in, even I know for Porik in with Galway, it's it's probably very tough on them as well. That between I think that he was saying the fifteen seekers and players that lads with Mike Cullen, their Shane is with Kilmacord. It's it's hard. It's it, it is hard. It's it kind of <laughs> it's it, I don't know what the solution is. Like but like it doesn't make sense. I know there and I'll say James Foley at the end of this week now. Like Johnny McGrath, in fairness, only for him he'd be the same boat. We've Nathan Granger, they're all in with Galway. They'd have played probably, say, James played last night, he played with us Wednesday, he'd be playing with us again, hopefully on Wednesday. And then, you know, that's three or four games in seven or eight. It's madness, like, it's this time of the year. Like, but I, I don't know what the solution, do you know, I don't know what the solution is, really, to be honest. Do you think moving it into December could work? Just. Well, don't you? If, it probably is what's going to have to happen, but the way the club has gone, then what's going? You know, like we we had lads there now, Joe Morton, and he was with the Downs in Westmead. He's only after coming back to us. Uh, Andrew Power was the goalie with Mike Cullen. He only back to us last week. Do you know? Say, it, 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 I don't know. I don't know what the solution is really. Like, it's, 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 it, but like the Sigerson and even the lads now that are playing the county, like it's a brilliant competition, but. Like even playing it off in two or three weeks, it's just I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you obviously came up short there during the week uh, against TU Dublin. I suppose it's the maybe kind of last chance now to I suppose get back into the competition uh, next week for you. Yeah, we came up short against. Now we it was kind of just a few little things didn't go our way. We the like. We were six all at half time, and unfortunately, Johnny McGrath got a hamstring injury. And for us, like he's he's then we've just, like he's irreplaceable. Like we've great lads and everything, but Johnny Johnny's a huge influence in our group. Like I'd be expecting Johnny to push on a big big year for him this year. And you know, just we kind of had to rejiggle everything then after he got injured, and we got just a kind of soft goal. They got a soft goal. Seven, six, fifteen minutes into the second half. But look, that's football. They'll have a good crack at UCC. It'll be tough on Wednesday, but at least it's at home in Shume. And we've good lads. We've great lads. We've great lads from Galway that are there. The likes of Johnny, James Foley, super lad, um, Connor Raftery, Owen Mannion, Nathan Granger, Andrew Power. All them, all good Galway club lads, and that aren't a million miles, that have a huge success with Galway underage as well. Um, Liam Costello is our captain as well. He, he was in the Galway panel as well last year, and you know they're good lads, great lads. So they they won't they won't fear UCC. They'll have a rattle at them, and we'll see how we get on. And uh, as a manager, is it is it hugely enjoyable? You often hear managers talking about, I suppose, being involved in this Sigerson competition. Ah, it is. It is. It's it's it's, uh, it's, it's brilliant. Like we had a great run last year with the Trench Cup, and. We, kind of our main objective this year, to be honest, was to stay safe in Seekers. And we did that in the league and we got we came out of the group. Um, as I said, we, 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 it is, it's very enjoyable. I have a great lad with me as well, Jason Donahue from Chum. He's involved with, he's also involved in the backroom team with the Galway seniors. Jack Hines from Mount Bellew, he's, he's involved with Mount Bellew. Um, you have know, then the, the likes of Tommy Frame and James, is, I know James's man, and Sean O'Dee. Sean O'Dee who's been involved with the college donkeys years and Damien Curl there and Mike Murray from player. They're all lads that were involved in the college. It is great for the play. And, uh, you know, the, it makes it up. We have a brilliant group of players. You know, we have a brilliant group of players. And in fairness, they they're, they're breed football. And that's an awful help. Absolutely. And uh, just as I suppose, touch back now on the um, Gold Mayo game, 
as we mentioned there, Sean Gall coming up short, um, three twelve to two seventeen. Is the biggest thing really for poor Joyce in this team, like I suppose, consider like I mentioned it last week on the podcast, considering they're gonna be out two starters from I suppose that back line in the all Ireland final against Galway. Is is the biggest thing for Galway to try and stabilise this defence early on in the National League? I I look at I don't think Paul could be too worried about yesterday, to be honest. Like as I said, he, he you know it's a great opportunity there to see a few lads and do you know the few lads that weren't there last year back in like and it'll take them time it's not just going to take one game or two and they're settling in like you said the likes of Matthew Barris top midfielder there for Galway for the last few years and it's great to see him have a go at it and do you know I just think it's it must be hard do you know we we seen it before Christmas with GMIT kind of when lads are involved with clubs and it's awful hard to do anything when they're not do you know and when you have the set, now the seven lads will be back or whatever it's been from Mike Cullen and all the college lads matches. It's just hard. I'd say kind of in the next two or three weeks you'll see, I'd say for the first round you'll see, God, you know, when you, all these players start coming back to us in the Seagulls and it'll make an awful difference for, for Galway and I'd say make an awful difference for Porrick and his backroom team. Yeah, I think he'd be, uh, as I previously said, I think he'd be delighted too with, you know, when you get to this level and I think the, especially where the level of Galway are at, um, sometimes you know managers value training more than games because you know these games while they're great for development um, it's very hard to work on things because you know there's no way that Galway would concede as much um, uh, was it two what was it I'd say concede yesterday two fifteen or two sixteen there's no way that, I think in the end, yeah. so, again because it's probably a lot of lads brought together and they haven't played a game before uh, many games um, I think you'd be happy to have you know training, uh, bring some of the lads in. You're looking at, you know, John Daly, Jamie Comer, McDade. These are, you know, huge players that still have to come in. Um, and, he, he, you know, the spine of the team will be very important this year. Um, I think what he was looking for, um, and probably one of the things that we've seen um, against Kerry when, you know, the game could have been in the melting pot, that we needed that bit more from the bench, maybe that impact or um, strong run runners. Like we've seen teams win all Irons before. You know, you, you look... Prime example, Dublin, you know, Kevin McMenamin coming on. He was almost the the, the blueprint of the super sub. Um, and that was almost his role to change a game. And, you know, there, there's, you know, especially the way GA has gone now, you know, it's not the 15 lads that win the game. It's the it's the 15 lads at the end of the game. And, you know, sometimes you need to have that bit of extra firepower. So I think he is looking for that at the moment. Um, I think he's looking for that fact. Um, and it'll be interesting now to see in the league um, if we see any other players, you know, uh, one or two come come through, he'll he'll keep the spine for the for the league because again, it's important to keep the the winning momentum and um, you know it's much easier for a team to start championship when you've had a good league. Uh, so I think they want to keep that momentum and um, so to keep the spine of the team very similar. Um, probably to have a few tweaks tactically, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to be looking at two or three players in the league that they can kind of bring forward for the championship, uh, especially, you know, uh, impact, you know, later in the summer. The biggest positive actually coming out last night after the game was Port Joyce's interview after the game where he's referenced Peter Cook is committing to the goal it calls for 2023. Sean, that's massive because even, like, if you look at that Glen game, referencing it during the podcast of the week, like, like Cook really dragged Mike Cullen back into that game and... I suppose with the way football's going, to have a player and a shooter like Peter Cook, who I suppose is just kind of this player. With, there's a lot of players who like take the scores in the scoring zone, but Peter Cook gives you that something different, able to I suppose land them scores outside the scoring zone. Uh, that's the thing, and you know, even if you look at how midfielders have been um, playing the last, or what managers are looking for from midfielders, it's almost kind of changed the role. Um, it might be slightly a bit different now from the days that you were there, Tom, but um, you can see how even the likes of McDade, that they're, um, they're runners, um, you know, even, you know, you could see them fielding Glenn and stuff like that, you know, they're, they're, they're all, you know, coming at pace and definitely, um, you know, McDade, one of the things that Cook can do, he can, he can catch a ball and he can run and you can see himself and McDade really um, giving um, a lot of hassle to a lot of different midfield partners um, around the country, so 
Um, and one of the big things also that he can kick a score from distance. Um, uh, one of the things, you know, maybe go we've been lacking slightly. Um, you know, the likes of Conroy, great for a score from distance. Um, Shaney, but again, it's great to have that another um, another player that can that can you know have that long distance kick, and uh, he'll definitely have a big impact. You know, when you think back, he was almost only getting going in his Galway career when he had a man of the match performance against Mio. I think he scored four points or five points from play that day, and then um, the the following September he was gone to America. So hopefully, uh, he would kick off again and um, start off where where, where he stopped um, against Mio that day. And Tom, it nearly kind of gives Goy then if like for Cook to come back in if he's midfield or half forward, but it does give them an option then to maybe look even at someone like Paul Connery as as a forward now. Oh, it does. It gives <clears throat> it gives huge options. Like in fairness, in fairness, Peter, he's top player. Like in you know, it, it just it gives it gives as I said, it gives options. It gives massive options there for around the middle half forward line. Um, you know, kind of just as you say, I'd say, like going back to the All Ireland, to just if the two, three or four more players just kind of to come on to make a difference, that's kind of what. And I'd say, if you said to Porrick, even the FBD and National League, I'd say the main thing would be kind of get them three or four players like, and he's definitely one. And it's great to see, say, the likes of Ian Burke back again. And you know, the, the, you cannot have enough, you cannot have enough options in fairness because you know. You're going to have injuries. You're going to have lads out of form. That's that's just the reality of it. Like, and I'd say, like even the FBD, like even say the likes of Daniel O'Flair to them lads, they're only twenty. Like in fairness, you're getting it's a great chance to get to, if you can get three or four. I was the last two games, and I was a few national league matches and be competitive in the national league. I'd say that's I'd say that's kind of what he's aiming for. And just uh, condolences as well to everyone in Saint James's yeah. and the. Uh, Sad passing of Paul Connery's father, Sean, uh, there uh, during the weekend. The uh, the start of that game, Tom, um, Mayo obviously racing into two nine uh, to five points um, lead. I suppose, like we were saying before the game, the dome can kind of lead to that kind of a game attacking where one team can just kind of get on top of the other. It, it, and then, like you look at it, go always come back. Then the second half, they seem to get. On top of uh, Mayo as well. Yeah, well, look, kind of, as Sean said, I'd be agreeing with him earlier on, kind of between Sigerson and everything, like it's kind of, you know, it nearly was 15 players. I know they were trained, but it's probably 15 players, kind of, the first time ever they played together as a team. Like that's, you know, it's, it has to have a huge influence. Like there'll be lads coming and going there the last few weeks between Club and Sigerson and that. And, the dome, kind of, we played a good few matches down there. It's a different, it's different than playing on the pitch. Like, you know, as you said, that can happen. That can happen. It's 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 just so fast, and it's you know it's it's completely it's 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 completely different than than, than re in reality than to game outside. But I'd say at halftime, no, I'd say poor, I, I, we wouldn't have been happy. But in fairness to them, in the second half it was a lot better. There was way more intensity in the tackle. Like they, you know, when they owed the ball, they were, they were getting the second man in and turning over a good bit more than they weren't just letting them walk through. But they finished strong, and you can see even I'd say even you'd be happy with the national league in ten, in two weeks or whatever to get even ten minutes into the likes of Damien, who was back from holidays, and you know I'd say he'd be very happy with the second half the way it finished off all together. To be honest, you know probably wouldn't have been happy with the first half, but I'd say there was there's positives as well. Sean, um, from performances wise, who stood out for you uh, against Mayo? Um, it was kind of interesting too to see um, you know a few of the positional play, uh, positions that you know Parks is going for. You know, one that kind of stood out for me before the game was you know Cal Swinney cornerback. Um, and again, if you're looking at the way modern football is played, cornerbacks are almost the most attacking player on the team. You know, you kind of, you're looking at the likes of Philly McMahon that kind of changed the cornerback role. Um, so he seems to be you know want someone that's a great you know strong runner and they can pop up for a score also. Um, uh, again, a player that's been standing up not only yesterday, um, but in the last few weeks, you know, Rob Finnerty. He seems to be kind of coming in, into his own and becoming a leader of that team. Um, he had a great summer um, last summer, and you know it seems like he's really pushing on. He seems like he's kind of um, you know his bulk up 
um, slightly and, you know, that he has that kind of pep in his step that he really wants to push on. So um, you could see him even yesterday, you know, getting on the ball. I'm sure he wanted to be on the ball more so, um, but, I'm, you know, that will come um, when, you know, the, some of the, 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 the other players will be back. Um, uh, again, you know, you could see in midfield also, um, you could see the subs also had an impact when they came on. Um, and again, I know Comer only came on for 10 minutes, which, you know, you could see almost the impact that he had. You know, he, he almost, he, he creates panic also um, around um, because of, you know, his physique and his power. So um, I think they'd be happy, as uh, Tom said there, players like Daniel Flair to come through. Um, and these are young lads also, that, you know, they're wearing the Galway jersey, senior jersey for the you know first time. And it's often a development. Um, and... You know, hopefully they'll push on, um, and you know over the next few years that uh, go keep pushing uh, for all Ireland's. A player Sean referenced earlier on, Tom uh, Tom O'Callaghan, um, really impressive last night, two two for him. Then even in the Sigerson during the week, uh, it was really impressive for NUIG, getting some key scores there, and against again, Leitrim as well made an impact. Like he really. Seems now like a player, and you'd still forget how young this this man is. But he really seems to be a player is keen to put his hand up and I suppose break into this team. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Like it's uh, even a lot of these lads, Daniel O'Farrell, said Tom O'Callaghan, Johnny, James Ford. People, we all forget how young they're. Like uh, uh, even I seen down through the academies. It's, it's, it's three or four years ago they were playing academy football. Now they're up in the big time. And Tom would have been there last year. He'd have seen it. I'm sure you know, All-Ireland final day and that and seen it and he knew kind of, I'm sure they've taken a look over the winter or whatever and seen what they have to do to kick on and start pushing and in fairness to him, the last, in fairness to him yesterday, he kicked, he, what was it, two, was it 2-2 two, two he came, kicked after coming on and if he keeps doing that and he, he was at 1-4 in the cigarettes and he'd be, he'd be pushing, he'd be pushing. As I said, you can't have enough options, you can't have enough options and that's what you want is these young lads coming through from minor under twenty for all the way up and pushing on to the seniors like you can't that's you won't be competition and keeps everyone on their toes. Like. Yeah, no, he really seems to be adding to another option uh, in attack. You could say. Just to finish up now, um, Sean. I guess we mentioned the first game, twenty eighth of January, Mayo in the league uh, to get goals started, which is probably going to be a really tough uh, Division One campaign. As a player around this time now in the lead up to the National League, from your own experience, what would it be like? Um, again, it's probably getting the body right. You know, a lot of the work will 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 have been done. Um, it's 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 difficult enough also for management, as Tom said there, because um, it's only it'll only be now in the next few weeks that he actually gets his full panel together. And even with that, until the Sigerson finishes, you know, it'll be hard to get everyone together. Um, and I know I've referenced it already. As I said, he'd be—I think he'd be delighted now to have next weekend that he can actually focus on Mayo rather than focusing on an FBD final. Um, he'd be able to bring in players. Some players might need that extra conditioning that they can work on at the weekend. Um, you know, it was referenced that you know Comer's just back from uh, from a break, so he might need that get something into the legs before the F F National League because it is very hard. It's an intense um, league, and you know there's not much time to be working on that extra bit of fitness um, because you're either recovering or getting ready for the next game. Um, so it's all about kind of getting the body right now, getting lads onto the pitch, getting them together, getting the game plan set. And um, I'm sure there'll be um, a lot of video sessions looking at the Mayo game. Um, I don't think they'll, they'll look too bothered or they won't look too much into that game yesterday because, it, you know, it was... Um, you know, there's a lot of new lads, you know, even kind of systems, hard to get, you know, things, um, systems right um, with that. But it'll be a totally different game in two weeks time um, two different teams. Um, so it'll be very interesting now. Um, I think Mayo will want to uh, set a marker. Well, actually, both teams will want to set a marker. Um, but, you know, you see Mayo with their new management under mixed day. Um, they almost want to set that marker yesterday. But I think... Um, PJ will want to set a, a new marker in the first game of the league, and he'd be telling, um, he'd be telling uh, his team that you know these are the teams that you have to beat. Um, you have to get used to beating the likes of the top tier teams. Um, you know, 
I was actually just listening to you know a podcast not so long ago. Um, that um, I think it's um, Paddy Andrews, um, and he was talking about their national leagues, and you know it's often said about the Dubs that they would be preparing for later on the summer, and they they'd want to peak for that. Um, and what he did say is when they played the likes of Mayo or the likes of Kerry, those top tier teams that they knew they were going to be playing against them, they went all out in the league for them because they wanted to set a marker um, knowing that they bet them earlier in the year um, because they knew they'd be seeing them later on in the summer. So they're the games that PJ will um, be targeting, the ones that he will he could see, you know, he could be playing, you, you will be playing uh, Mayo and Connacht. Um, you know, like to Kerry also, you know, the rematch of the All Ireland, they will want to set a, a marker also saying that we're not going anywhere and that we're going to be around for the next few seasons and especially this summer. As as well, Sean, like coming into the league now as a player and you see 28th of January, is it something you enjoy because nearly well, was it was something you enjoyed as a player playing around this time of year? Because, like, as we talked about, Gutter, it's and still, the kind of first, second, first or second round of the league, you're still kind of playing in these tough conditions. Yeah, I look, you'd be looking forward to it, but I like, I remember some of the games, especially the first, like, first few games. Um, I remember playing a game against Donegal um, in the first round of the league, or it was the second round. Um, we actually played me in the first round, and I was blown. Like, it was, it was different gravy. Like, even the intensity, it goes, it multiplies by three times and goes up 50% from the FBD. And if you're not in conditioning um, or if you haven't put the, the prior work in, you know, from November onwards, you, you'll feel it. So, um, you know, the grounds are heavy um, still. Um, I know they do a great job and Pierce Stadium has improved a lot. But, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. Look, we've been looking at the rain for the last 10 days. And a lot of these pitches are going to be heavy no matter what you do. Um, and it's almost trying to adapt also because you have to adapt. You can't just play the same way that you're going to play in the summer. Um, and even in the summer, we're not guaranteed great weather sometimes. You know, some of the winds Galway had um, in the last few years, you know, they all start playing better in the second half against the wind. So there's different, you know, you have to be able to adapt to any kind of conditions. And, um, you know, coming up um, in the next few weeks, they'll definitely be working on a few things. Um, but they will want to set a marker against uh, some of those teams um, that they'll see later on in the summer. And Tom, just to I suppose finish up, like for yourself, seeing your own club mate like Port Joyce and the journey Everton last year getting to the All Ireland final, and back this year now and going obviously hungry for more. But what's what's been like seeing your club mate Port Joyce over this team? Ah, sure, it's it's, it's look, it's been, it's been brilliant. It's you know we're kind of brilliant and. We've been all following along the way. In fairness, last year was brilliant. Like you know, <laughs> going up to Dublin and everything, and you know, one of our own clubmen that you played with for donkeys years over them, and just hoping everything and ho all we can do, we hope for is that he can he can land all Ireland hopefully this year, and everyone in Killer Ireland will be behind him and cheering him on, and that's and, you know, in fairness to him, Parik Parik is a legend and. He was kind of, you know, odds from we were knee high. We were that we always, he was kind of the one in Killer and we always looked up to from his playing days and now on to management. So we just, you know, other words like you'd be very proud of, in fairness to Parik. And he, you know, he, it'd be a lot of clubs that, that wish they had him, in fairness. And what, like, you talked there about, uh, I suppose, playing with Parik and now over the goal team. And it's, you can tell, obviously, straight away that he's such a leader. But for you, what makes him such a leader? Ah, uh, but sure. <laughs> if it was only game, of, if it was only game of pool playing in the red gap, Parik, Parik would have to win it. Like that's, that's that's Parik. Like he he he's a he's a born winner. And in fairness, he just has this thing that he he'll bring everyone with him. He, he <clears throat> I remember we won the under twenty one A, and he was training us and. Like he'd everyone, I remember there was some sort of appeal or something going on at the time and we we're training over Christmas and everyone and just, he just, you know, he, he had everyone, he had everyone wrapped around the finger, like everyone brought with him and there was a time for crack and a time for playing and, you know, it's, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's just his personality that he seems to be able to bring, get the most out of number 30 is get the most out of number one and, you know, that's, I, I in fairness, 
over, especially intercounty teams. You have a lot of different personalities, different egos, different everything. And you know, it's not it's it's, it's not too many people that can do. We're trying to keep everyone happy and keep everyone pulling in the same direction. But just he's he's a born leader and probably a born winner, and people feed off that and probably gets <clears throat> probably gets even people playing above themselves. Just you know. Yeah, no, some really, some really interesting uh, insight there about Port Joyce and this current goal team. And um, that's all on our show. But before uh, we do finish up, I just want to show all our listeners uh, these Gaelic gloves we have on sale at the minute. Uh, they're backdoor GA Gaelic gloves. Um, every donation from the gloves is going to a mental health uh, charity called Let's Get Talking, who have an office in Galway. So any support would be greatly appreciated there. They're available to buy through our social media and by contacting 05 169. Zero double three five. Uh, but that's all on our show. A massive thank you uh, to Tom Hughes and Sean Denver for coming on. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks.